I'm an economist. You can expect dismal things from me only. We cannot talk humor at all. So unfortunately, the last speaker will make you sad and dismal while you heard rousing speeches from everybody. I will characteristically be dismal. So let me tell you what I'm going to talk about and I'll make it very short because this is going to be before dinner. I'm going to talk about what a poor country is. We are a poor country. They tell me we are a poor country because we have no resources. Absolute hogwash. They tell me we are a poor country because we don't have oil. Hogwash. We are a poor country because we don't give talent opportunity. Our lives are wasted because we don't give opportunity to the real talented people. We waste talent. Let me point out a few stories here. I hope you recognize these people. The first piece of pe person on the left is Shweb Hashmi. Another icon from our generation. He was a great playwright, a great actor, a great dramatist. But he was condemned to be an economist. He didn't want to teach economics, but he spent his entire life teaching economics in government college Lahore, a reluctant economist. Why? Because the media was not open then. There were no theaters in Lahore. He used to perform a play on, on television for 150 rupees an appearance. I think to begin with 15, later 150. Many of his plays were banned. Today, Shweb Saab is sick, and we should all remember him. Please give him a big hand. Shweb Saab deserves that. Had he been given the opportunity, God knows what heights he would have achieved. He too was given only one choice, like it was our option, join the civil service. Next is Khaled Ahmed, another person who should have been a professor or probably a writer. He was forced to join the civil service because there was nothing else to do. He joined the foreign service, but he couldn't last very long. He stayed there 10 years, came out, became a writer in a newspaper, and is one of our giants intellectually and has served Pakistan very well. But again, I'm afraid his wings were clipped by the fact that we didn't have a market then, by the fact that the government had too many rules imposed, by the fact that there was no media market, by the fact that the media had not opened up then. Next in the corner, I've got Harun Rahim, a motley choice. I must tell you, I can name a thousand people, maybe more. Harun Rahim, who you, many of you probably have not heard of. He was my age. He probably achieved the highest level any tennis person has achieved in Pakistan. He got to the quarterfinal, quarterfinal on the third, fourth round of Wimbledon. He um, played before Jimmy Connors in, uh, in, in uh, uh, UCLA. But Harun was never owned by Pakistan. He never came back to Pakistan and today nobody knows where he is. Pakistan never honored him, never remembered him. Next, you can see Hashim Khan, another one of our greats that we never owned, never recognized because sports was and is still not an industry in Pakistan. We have cricket, but we have no sports industry. Even today, squash is not remembered, even though we had the top uh, players in squash for over 10 or 15 years. And then, of course, our own Abdul Salam that we've never chosen to own and who was never given a teaching appointment in Pakistan. Then right there in the bottom right hand corner, you see Ayub Amaya, famous neurosurgeon who has many textbooks in his name, who has many procedures to his name, who has the Umayya pump, never recognized in Pakistan. Tried to get into King Edward Medical College, they denied him that. Then you've got Fred Hassan, a class fellow with Azal Hassan. Fred Hassan, who became a big name in American pharmaceuticals, again lost to Pakistan. 
Then my class member, Atik Raza, who spoke to us in the youth conference in Peshawar. Another one lost to Pakistan. Another person very successful in the world. So what is the story here? I see young people complain, but let me tell you, this is the story of my generation. People had only one choice, like it is our last one. Join the civil service or join the army. Other people were even engineers were forced to go out of the country. Doctors were forced to go out of the country. So what was the situation? We were told, exit, leave, there's no career here. Has it changed? Has it really changed? Even I, for example, I'll tell you, I've become an accidental economist. I wasn't going to be an economist. Like at Azad, I was studying to do the civil service. We were all preparing for the civil service. We decided not to take that opportunity because we said, hey, the whole service has gone to the dogs. There's no other career. So most of us chose a career, economics, business, whatever. And then most of us spent a career overseas. I spent 35 years in the fund. Most of my colleagues spent much time in international banks, investment banks, went to the US, went to UK, went to Europe. So the opportunity that we had was to exit the country. Why? Because the government had controlled the market tight. There were no opportunities for people like Aisha. There were no opportunities for people who were actors. There were no opportunities for people who could do different things. The market was tightly closed. It was closed so much so that we went, when we went to abroad to study, we had to get special permission from the state bank, foreign office, everybody. Otherwise, you couldn't even go abroad to study. That was what we faced. So has that changed? Not really. Only recently, I dug this out of the newspaper. A swimmer goes to swim in a competition, disappears. A football team goes overseas, disappears. Lots of people still seek migration as the only way to realize their talent. Is there opportunity to realize your talent here or not? This is the true question that we must all face. What is the opportunity for? Opportunity is for your excellence. Opportunity is for your talent. Realization, for your self-actualization. Do we have that? Again, if you look at it, even now, just a year ago, HEC sends a lot of people overseas on scholarships to do PhDs. 83 of them did not return out of 132 last year. Talented people want to leave the country. This is what forced us to ask the question. Does Pakistani talent still face, face the choice of leaving the country? And I argue, yes. We wrote this knowledge brief. We talked to a lot of people. We did a lot of webinars. And the considered response of many specialists, headhunters, human resource specialists, other people was Pakistan is talent repellent. Pakistan throws its talent out. Now, why is that important? Does it matter? What happens if you lose a Fred Hassan or a Umayya or a Salam? Does it matter? That is a question that you should consider. I put it to you this way. That the story of development is nothing but the management of talent. Is nothing but merit. Is nothing but developing a meritocratic system. You probably read all the books and the articles that you can and everybody says the same thing. Well, not quite, but no, one has to talk about institutions. But the ultimate institutions is how do you manage your talent? How do you allow your talent to grow? If you go back as far as... Uh, Columbus, or even earlier, all the famous scientists, etc., at one point or another, Galileo and uh, uh, Leonardo da Vinci, or whoever you might think of, were patronized by kings. Columbus was given a grant to go and seek out the new world. Uh, 
um, Magellan was given another grant to go out and see the world, navigate the world. That's how they developed navigation. Longitude was developed because Parliament passed a grant in 1620, a prize that anybody who discovers how to navigate the globe through discovery of longitude will get 20,000 pounds. Can you imagine the Parliament did that in 1620? Our government can't even do that today. That's what talent is. That's what merit is. And that is the story of development. The story of poverty, where we are, is we don't respect talent. We think that talent is something that we can send out. And yes, the US government has benefited from this. US government, there are some straight quotations I picked up from US reports, um, reports presented to the Congress and otherwise, that talent is what is responsible for the US growth. Talent is what is responsible. They recognize it. They have their H-1B visas, they have their immigration visas, they have their immigration policy based on talent. In each of these countries, you pass a certain exam, you show certain talent, you get in. They've calculated that growth, 20 to 40 percent of productivity growth, which is a very large proportion of growth, is based on talent. That a large number of companies that are founded are based on immigrant talent. Who supplies them the talent? The poor countries, us. We are poor because we don't respect our talent. I think that's a key message you should think about, that we refuse to give opportunity to our talented people. So, the game, my friends, internationally is got talent. Have you got talent? And you can see these TV shows, America's got talent, UK's got talent, etc. The reality shows are all about talent, all about merit. Yet, the message has not come to us. If you go to Amazon, you'll see 50,000 books titled on talent. Just talent management, 50,000 titles and more. I went to Mr. Books, the local bookstore. You hardly find any books on talent. So the question is, what do we do with our talent? We export it. Now, why is talent so important? We all talk about growth and development every day. You hear on TV, hey, we should grow more. We should have more development, the demographic dividend, all that kind of stuff that people parrot without understanding. GDP is nothing but opportunities realized. GDP is only opportunities realized. And what is talent for? Talent is for excellence. Ladies and gentlemen, remember excellence. Here when we interviewed kids and when we asked kids, everybody said, hey, if only I could get a grade 17 job. A nation whose children dream of a grade 17 job is a poor nation. Steve Jobs was mentioned today by somebody. Steve Jobs was an illegitimate child of a Syrian immigrant. He became a dominant figure in our generation. Elon Musk comes from South Africa. Look at what he's done. But he didn't do it in South Africa. He did it in the US affair where the talent is given an opportunity where wild kids in Silicon Valley dreaming of changing the world did change the world. That's the kind of opportunity we need. Here, unfortunately, we have what I call the NOC spam. You're always getting NOCs, you're always getting permission, you're always going to court. We are hamstrung by our own regulations, so we can't go anywhere. But think about it. The talent market has grown even as we, was, as we are speaking. When I was a child, way back, I'm talking about 1957, if I remember right. Just look at that. Ken Rosewall came and played, Pancho Gonzalez, all the major tennis stars came and played in Lahore, in front of me. I have photographs of them. They came and played here because the talent market has not developed so much. Today, if you look at Nadal or you look at um, uh, Djokovic, they're billionaires. The talent market is rewarding excellence. It's rewarding all kinds of excellence. Take the top 10 companies in America. The CEOs are all Indians and they're all billionaires. Talent market is global. It is rewarding everybody. And if you have talent, you can go anywhere in the world. 
They are ready with open arms. They've got a visa for you. Except here. That's a tragedy. We throw out the talent. So the rewards to talent are increasing. The global talent market is, increased, is getting more and more um, integrated. There's an excellence reward everywhere. But we are getting left behind because we don't regard talent as of any merit. We have 100 stadiums. We have no sports, unfortunately. Why? Because the bureaucracy doesn't like sports. So there's a problem. So this is the issue that we've got. If you look at that, the internet is rising at a very level, at a big level. It's double, sorry, it's uh, grown by 7 to 10, uh, 10 times over the last 10-15 uh, years and it's growing at an increasing rate. Guess what? Pakistan still does not have internet in many places. We did some research on this and found out internet is still lacking in many places. It's too expensive. And now the government has put in a tax on buying tablets and computers. So we shoot ourselves in the foot again and again because we don't like talent. So somebody told me that, hey, the internet is a great equalizer. I said, only we can follow it up. It's an equalizer, yes, but we will follow it up. We will get it. So that is the issue that we face. Top 10 countries, companies in the world are $4 trillion. Whereas our largest company is hardly a billion or two billion dollars. We are that small. Our GDP is about $350 billion. Can you imagine our GDP is one-tenth the size of Apple probably? There is another thing that I wanted to show you which is very important. Our opportunity is this. This is how we value excellence. We haven't won an Olympic gold medal. The fifth largest country has won no Olympic gold medal in the last 30 years, 40. We did at one point. What? Why? Winter Olympics now, we've sent four people, or five people, I think. There's one athlete, four officials. Summer Olympics, we sent eight athletes, 24 officials. The ratio is always three to one. More officials than athletes. And we win no medals. Right? So this is the key issue that we have. You find talent and opportunity are words that are missing. We find SRs, we find poverty. We want to give charity, but we don't want to give talent and opportunity. So that's an important thing. We want to remain a patrimonial economy. And we want to invest in brick and mortar. We become a nation of kickers and blocks. There's no room for the salam here. There's no room for creative thinkers or creative people. With that, I hope you will think about opportunity differently. Thank you very much.